Riding a motorcycle in constant fear of a crash is just as bad as overconfidence. Sure, fear is a good thing because it keeps you alert, but it makes the ride a lot less enjoyable. And besides, too much of anything yeah, isn't good for you. Sex recently. Guys like Bob need to learn that we can't have sex all the time. It's all about balance. How's it going people? Brown Brady here. And in this episode, I will show you seven steps to gain confidence on a motorcycle. Or at least how I did. Step one is to accept the risks and move on. I'm a smoker and I get to see a warning label on the pack every time I pull out a cigarette. In a way, I'm accepting the risks of smoking by lighting up anyway. And the same can be said for riding a motorcycle and even more so in North America because you don't see a lot of bikes on the roads compared to other countries like India and China anyway. Uh, motorcycles require more focus and concentration so you must always be ready to avoid vehicles that'll eventually cut you off. And let's be honest, to many Canadians, riding a motorcycle is just a hobby. You weren't forced by anyone to ride a more dangerous mode of transportation, which by the way is a common argument that some drivers often use to hate on bikers. Well, you have a Harley Davidson, you're some like cool ass person. No, you're a fucking asshole. Let's uh, keep it Will on. you fall? Well, some riders say there are two types of bikers. Those who have fallen and those who haven't. Yet either by your own doing or because of obstacles like vehicles and animals. Will you get killed? Maybe. Think about these risks, then accept them. Now stop thinking about them constantly because there's nothing you can do about things you cannot control. Step two is to take a motorcycle safety course. This is probably the single most important investment you'll make. And if you can't afford it, at least learn from an experienced rider who will teach you the basics like walking your bike, startup routines, accelerating, emergency braking, and counter steering. It's better to make mistakes in a controlled environment where you don't have to worry about other cars on the road or people, pets. In some riding schools, you can experiment with other types of bikes like sport bikes, standard cruisers, dirt bikes which was the case at RTI where I learned which by the way I endorse they're a great school and as a bonus you may get back your investment by saving on insurance if you took a safety course step three always wear protective gear start shopping for your gear before your bike you can wear the same gear no matter what type of bike you eventually get most motorcycle safety courses require you to wear some gear anyway full face helmet offers the best protection because it has a chin bar it's also good to have a jacket preferably ones with built-in armor or real leather leather gloves pants preferably thick denim kevlar reinforced or leather and riding boots you know i don't ride around in all that gear thinking that i'm invincible i understand that it will only reduce the extent of my injuries should I get into an accident. Step four is to start with a low powered bike. Smaller bikes are more forgiving when you make a mistake because they are lighter and less powerful. And as a general rule, anything below 500 cc's is a good beginner's bike. Why? Because you will eventually make a mistake or be tempted to do something stupid. Yeah, uh, a low powered bike is more likely to give you a second chance to keep riding or to call it quits. And here's a special message to middle-aged riders like myself, now that you are more likely uh, financially capable of making that dream bike as your first try to resist that temptation unless of course you're happy with a small bike once you have your beginner's bike understand all the switches knobs and whatnot and guess what since a smaller bike is cheaper you might be able to afford to get one with abs however this is not a reason for you to slam on the brakes in the middle of a turn they are great for keeping the bike wheels from locking up during an emergency braking and again don't skip that beginner's bike and believe me if it is not your dream bike it won't be your last purchase step five is to practice in empty lots and work your way up don't ride in public roads immediately don't rush it build upon what you learned from your motorcycle safety course first some things you may not have learned include using your turn signals with head checks low speed turns and coming to a stop at a slope because where I learned everything was flat but in the real world, that's not true. Sometimes I may have to angle the bike a certain way so that I can keep the bike upright. Practice clutching, signaling, and braking until you can do them without taking your eyes off the road. Then move up to a low traffic street and put your skills to the test. Start with minimal distractions. Put away your vlogging equipment for now because there are already enough distracted drivers that you need to be looking out for. And when you eventually make it up to high traffic roads, you will need to look out for other drivers or riders they may change lanes without signaling. Red light beaters, drunk drivers, 
bicyclists and joggers, jaywalkers and animals. Step six is to be a defensive rider. When I had a sailboat, I was taught that a good skill was knowing when not to sail or when to call it a day. Learn to identify things that can affect your ride like poor weather or poor road conditions, problems with your bike or even your mood. Ride like you are invisible so to speak because many drivers will not see you approaching. Do not assume that they can see you. So always be aware of situations and have at least one escape path. Avoid riding too aggressively because overconfidence gives you a false sense of security. If you want to get into advanced riding skills such as racing and stunting, Learn them off of the public road. Keep your cool. You will be cut off. Remember, you accepted that risk in step one. But if you have already lost your cool, sometimes it's better to pull over and relax for a bit. I don't try to be a model rider, but at least I try not to set a bad example for all of us. And finally, step seven is to get roadside assistance. When something goes wrong with your bike, like a flat, a dead battery, or running out of fuel, roadside assistance can help. Also, a first aid kit would come in handy if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere with an injury. It also helps to tell someone about your road trip so that they know the route you're taking in case you end up in a ditch somewhere. They have an idea where to look. Anyway, guys and gals, the point of this blog is not to eliminate fear, but to manage it. You still want just enough of it if you plan on writing more the next day. If you have anything else to add, let me know in the comments section and I'll most definitely appreciate it. Thanks for joining me in this video and if you liked it, please hit that like button or better yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video. As always, ride safe and thanks for watching.